Jared Poland Fro knows photo. <laughs> Dot com and this, this is your. He's been sick. Very sick. Photo News Fix. Bear with me this week as I'm getting over a cold which somehow has ended up in my throat, <laughs> making it hard to talk. This fix is brought to you by Storyblocks, which has been an invaluable asset for us for well over 10 years at this point. 10 years! Where do you think all of those amazing PR photos come from for all of those Sony, Canon, Nikon, Panasonic people that give us a call? Storyblocks, that's where. Yep, Storyblocks gives you unlimited access to royalty-free photos, videos, music, sound effects, vectors, motion backgrounds, and so much more for one subscription cost, which means you never pay per clip. On top of that, there's a Storyblocks plugin for Adobe Premiere that allows you to search all of Storyblocks right in Premiere, and that is such a time saver. Oh yeah, and for those DaVinci Resolve users, templates are now available in your Storyblocks library. We pretty much use something from Storyblocks in every video that we make. In fact, here's an odd video of two people looking at 35 millimeter negative and smiling as if they know exactly what they're looking at. Anyway, to sign up for Storyblocks or to learn more, head on over to storyblocks.com slash fro. First up, Sony has officially released another compact zoom G lens. This time around, they released the 16 to 25 millimeter f2.8, which will blend perfectly next to the recently announced 24 to 50 2.8G. Now keep in mind, Sony is a little late to the game of lower end, but quality zoom lenses. Case in point, Sigma has a 16 to 28 2.8 and Timeron has a 17 to 28 2.8. Now sure, the Sony is smaller and lighter than the other two, but it's also more expensive and I'll get to the price in just a second. Now there's no doubt in my mind that Sony created a beautiful compact quality lens for both stills and videos. Optically, it's gonna be fantastic. Focus-wise, it's also gonna do a great job, even if for some reason you decide to slap it on an A93 and wanna get 120 frames per second. So how much does it cost? $1,200. Whereas Sigma's is 900 and Tamron's is 800. A 300 or $400 difference is huge for someone just starting out looking to build their first kit. Here's how I look at it. If you're a filmmaker and Sony's 16 to 35 2.8 is too expensive and too heavy, for your needs, then a Sony 16 to 25 might be a great choice for you. But if you're a new photographer or videographer, the Tamron and Sigma still might be a better choice for the price savings. And last but not least, if you're focused on mostly stills and you're about to drop $1,200 on a G lens, so we're crazy. would it be better for you to get something like a Sigma 14 to 24 that's wider for a few bucks more? I don't know. Any way you slice it, this is a win for everybody because everyone is putting out fantastic glass today. What do you think? Let me know down below. Next up, Insta360 has released the X4 and I jumped out of a plane to test it. Now scratch that, I, I paid someone else to jump out of a plane and test it because I, I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I did it before though, but I did use it out in the real world from the Phillies to soccer to riding my bike in my super tight, tight shorts where it shows off my nice butt. He must work out. As well as taking it to the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall. Anyway, Insta360's latest 360 action camera acts pretty much as two cameras in one. And I don't mean that because it has dual lenses for 360. I mean, you can record 360 videos up to 8K, but if you wanna use it more like a traditional action camera, you can use just a single front facing lens and record 4K up to 60 frames per second. There's no other action camera on the market that can do that. So what's changed from the X3 to the X4? Well, the X4 is slightly larger with a bigger battery that will give you up to 67% longer runtime at roughly 135 minutes in 5.7K and a little over 70 minutes in 8K. And lens guards are now included in the box. As a content creator, I've been using 360 footage on as many shoots as possible to help showcase where and what I'm shooting. And contrary to popular belief, the point of 360 isn't really meant for just VR goggles. It's meant to allow you to shoot and reframe later. Now, speaking of reframing later, Insta 360 launched a reframe plugin for Premiere Pro to make editing much easier. Is this camera for everyone? 
No, but if you're a content creator of any kind looking to share your process, this might be a great addition to your camera bag. The X4 comes in pricier than the X3 at $499, which is right in line with the other competitors that are on the market. Real quick before the last story, don't forget I am taking donations in support of cancer research as I take part in the American Cancer Society Bikeathon in June. To donate, simply look to the right of the video or slightly below, or if you're on mobile, you can find a donate button right down below. Thank you for your support. And finally, Nikon is embracing Canon's RF mount. Now before you yell, it's unauthorized clickbait. It's true, let me explain. On April 12th, Nikon's acquisition of RED became official. And as you know, RED has embraced Canon's EF mounts in the past, and as of late, the RF mount. But with Nikon now owning RED, will they kill off the RF mount in favor of something else? Salty. According to Petapixel, who spoke at length to a panel of Nikon and RED executives, they don't plan on having a Z mount RED camera anytime soon. But they did discuss the possibility of developing Nikkor cinema glass in the future. Phone call, oh, I wonder who that could be. Hello? Oh, Greta Thunberg with Nikon PR. What's that? Oh, you're now part of Red PR? But you're currently in jail as you got arrested again to, for protesting something? And you used your one call to call me? Oh, how dare you? Goodbye. Sick burn. No, I think Nikon has to walk a delicate line here. They can't and probably won't stop supporting PL, EF, and RF mounts anytime soon, but there's no reason why they can't release a Z mount with Z mount cinema lenses to give people more options in the future. Now, for those people who like to mount F mount glass to their cinema cameras, maybe they'll come out with an adapter for that as well. This is still pretty cool that Nikon was able to pull this off and purchase RED and get right into the cinema world. What do you think? Let me know down below. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.